this is time for things <laughs> long. People are always late in Ireland, but nicely late, not rudely late, just yeah, yeah. busy lives late. Yeah, I mean, maybe if it's, give us an extra five, if it's kind of really, you know. Oh, I don't know. Here it goes. <laughs> It wouldn't be good. Yeah, nah. <laughs> also, also, maybe shorten us. Eight o'clock. That's all you get. <laughs> maybe shorten us if it's a. <laughs> so, should we start? Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome. On behalf of Gallery Photography Ireland, I'd like to welcome you all to this in conversation event with Endebo, Max Cooper, and Lenny Abramson. We're delighted you can join us from wherever you are tonight. This talk event is organised as part of Enda's Love's Fire Song exhibition, which is on show at Gallery Photography Ireland in Temple Bar in Dublin. So firstly, congratulations to Enda on a beautiful, engaging show. It's been a real delight to premiere this work in Ireland. Though the exhibition is closed at present, of course, um, you can visit our gallery website where you can access links to Max Soundtrack, which he's kindly shared, and you can enjoy a virtual tour of the exhibition and there's an interview with Enda there. And we're, we're happy to say that we can now extend the exhibition into middle November. For those of you who haven't had a chance to visit the exhibition in real life, mm -hmm. there's still an opportunity to do that. Um, th this exhibition, I should say, is curated as part of Gallery Photography Ireland's five-year Reframing the Border programme, which is exploring creative responses to the border and Northern Ireland. I should like to take this opportunity to thank our funders, the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade Reconciliation Fund, Department of Media, Tourism, Arts, Culture, Sport and the Giltot, that's a mouthful, the Arts Council and Dublin City Council. And thanks also to our partner organisations, The Positive Space, and Regional Cultural Centre, Donegal. Tonight's talk will last about 45 minutes. Firstly, I'd like to say thanks to Enda, Max and Lenny for taking the time to join us and to take part in this conversation. So I'm just gonna briefly kind of give you a, a very small um, bio from each of our speakers, but you can um, get more information from their own websites. Firstly, Max, I'd like to introduce Max Cooper. Max Cooper interrogates the intersection between electronic music, visual art, technology, and science. He's worked with collaborators in large scale institutions such as the Barbican Zaha Hadid Architects and Dolby Atmos. Max explores concepts of emergence, identity, and infinity to create an immersion of sound, vision, and concept that can totally remove you from your normal experience of reality and put you somewhere new. At the core, Max Cooper's mission as a musician, DJ, and interdisciplinary artist is all about provoking a greater understanding. Our own Emmett Nouveau is one of the rising stars in contemporary photography. His work has been exhibited in leading galleries and museums, including Victoria and Albert Museum, Douglas Hyde Gallery in Dublin, National Portrait Gallery London, Photohof Gallery in Salzburg, Visual in Carlo, and most recently their side, um, Dortmund RU in Dortmund, and thanks also to their support and Anna Marr in particular. Enda has been nominated for a number of prestigious international prizes, and most recently he was winner of the National Gallery of Ireland Zurich Portrait Prize in 2019. We here in Gallery Photography first showed Enda's work way back in 2015 as part of our Arts Awards Solace Photography Prize. Um, but more recently, Enda has, has, has branched out into other areas and he's recently collaborated with Enny, worked with Enny, Lenny on the acclaimed TV series Normal People. And finally, Lenny, known to you all, I'm sure, but Lenny is an Irish film director and screenwriter. He's known for directing such acclaimed independent films as Adam and Paul, Garage, what Richard did, and Frank, all of which contributed to his six Irish film and television awards. In 2015, he received widespread recognition for directing Room, based on a novel the same by Emma Donoghue. The film received four Academy nominations, including Best Picture and Best Director. In 2020, he directed six episodes of the Emmy-nominated TV series Normal People, and he's also going to lead tonight's discussion. I'd like to hand over to you, Lenny. Thank you very much. Chris, thanks so much. Um, I, uh, it's lovely to do this. Um, I'll give you a brief bit of background as to the connection that I have with, with End initially and now very happily with Max. So when I made Adam and Paul, which is my first feature, um, I think Enda got in contact. Uh, am I right, Enda? You, you, it, something about the film you really liked. Mm -hmm. And I got this message from Enda and, um, and he shared some of his work with me, which immediately um, I fell in love with. And 
um, we met not that long afterwards and we started talking in this conversation that's lasted all the years since then. Um, and um, I think there's something about Enda's photography, which just particularly resonates with me, something about the way he, he does portraiture, um, which is both kind of considered and framed and also seems free and immediate and alive. And that, that's a, that's a, uh, a tension and a task that I think the film director shares, you know, which is to set things up and make them real, putting putting it really crudely. That 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 difficult pair of 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 uh, of desiderata, and um, also uh, so jump forward. Then um, we've been chatting and talking, and I've been watching Ender's work with increasing admiration through all the years that followed. And then um, uh, I was working on the preparation of normal people with a brilliant cinematographer called Susie Lavelle and I shared some of Ender's pictures with Susie and along with some other references they became central to our concept of how normal people would look and chatting to Ender about that and it also turns out that he was dabbling in and interested in on-set photography, photography so we had this extraordinary situation where the one of the the uh, people whose work was a reference for the show ended up working on the show. So Enda was on set through pretty much through a lot of the very long and pretty arduous shoot. And we got to spend more time and talk more about photography and filmmaking and art generally in life. Um, and uh, then Enda uh, asked me, would I do this event? And uh, as a consequence, I had the pleasure of going into the gallery just before this new uh, wave of, of lockdown um, uh, and had the place to myself for an hour. Um, and I, I really, I knew that Max had been involved and that, that Enda was working music into the work, but I didn't quite know what to expect or how that would be, um, how I would experience that. Cause I knew the photographs, at least I knew them, I knew the JPEGs, you know, I didn't know that I hadn't seen them in, 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 a, in a gallery space. Anyway, last week I went in and it just, it reaffirmed for me the kind of the particular quality of Enda's work. And it did it in a way which was amplified by Max's music and the marriage of the two seemed to me to be absolutely perfect. So I walked in and um, I was foozing around with my bike for a while. So the music was drifting down the stairs and it was a particular point in the cycle of Max's work, which was sort of very concentrated, quite minimal. And it just, without me really realizing it, it did work on me as I then walked up the stairs and saw a picture uh, which we can share later on, but it's the first picture you look left as you go to the top of the stairs and there's this extraordinary portrait of a boy looking camera left. And um, I just felt absolutely overwhelmed with a sort of sense of intimacy and love and potential. And I don't know, just a sort of the thing that Enda's work does, this kind of encounter with another person that it seems to provide you with. Um, just, you know, beyond all the graphic excellence of it and the kind of color, uh, thoughtfulness that he has there's this kind of human quality and I spent the rest of the hour just thinking about all sorts of things and and listening to Max's music which has this kind of concentrating not resolving constantly shifting never allowing you to to sort of sit in a particular tempo just keeping your mind uh sort of open in some very extraordinary way and I found the 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 combination to be really affecting and uh so now we we're in this that now we've come up to the present moment um and i think um yeah just to sort of set I, I i don't know how many of you will have seen the exhibition but but it is this uh exhibition which takes place sort of in that space of those uh peace lines in the north and 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 it is about i suppose this point of, in a way, it certainly references many of the social and political aspects of the troubles with which we're all familiar. And it does so around this notion of the bonfires, which is this beautiful image uh, in Enda's hands. But for me, it's what's so interesting about the work is that all of that context, while it's additive and does um, deepen one's experience of the pictures, it's actually the encounter first. And then after a few minutes, I started to tune into the kind of the symbolism, the the geopolitics of that little stretch of the world. But but actually, what first hits you is the sonic and the visual and the truthfulness of that. 
Um, and that's what I've always been interested in as a filmmaker, even though my work does have sometimes specific things to say about the place and the lives in a sort of social or, or sort of socioeconomic sense. That's never what is at the center of it. What's at the center of it is some kind of attempt, usually not very successful, at finding a way into that unknowable middle of a person that, that otherwise eludes you. And I think that in both Max's case and Ender's case, that, that task is, is the same. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is a wonderful opportunity for me to have a chat with these two guys about what it is that they do. Um, and so what I thought we would do maybe is just, um, having talked about that notion of immediacy and of encounter and of present tense and, and, and the humane task at the center of, of this experience for me, I wanted to um, ask you guys about your practice and about whether those ideas are, you know, that's how you think about it or whether you think about it in a very different way. So maybe I'll, I'll start with Enda. Uh, thanks, thanks very much, uh, Lenny, and th thanks for so many amazing words. Um, yeah, yeah, for me, from the from the very beginning, um, humanity was always what I was interested in. The the, the, the feelings we we all share, the the words we can't say, we don't have the words to express them. You know, the things we feel that we just can't get them out, and um, and then no matter where we're from or what country we're from, that's that's what unifies us all. That's what links us all, and it it's there. And I, from a very early age, I decided to focus on that emotional quietness. And it, I mean, it really was a, a specialism, I suppose. You know, when I was very young, I was very quiet. I, I had quite bad epilepsy, so I became a little bit withdrawn, I suppose. So, but I really, I really, I was around a lot of people. I was really observing the subtleties of people. There are their expressions and their faces, their, the quietness of people. And um, that kind of became my, my thing is um, searching to photograph things that aren't said, but they're in here to try and verbalize, to try and visualize the things we, that we feel. But to, to and, 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 and then in every picture I make, to have them all linked together with that thing, thing we can't speak, and that's what links the project together, projects together. And in this case, that's that's the idea of linking the the U culture either side of the peace wall is by their emotions, not by where they were born. You know, it, it's not important for me in the project to know where they were born. It's what's important is our humanity, and uh, to try and photograph how we are and, and how we're getting on in the world and our vulnerabilities and our hopes and, and our dreams. Or failures and would you show that picture and uh, the 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 one I referred to of the boy looking out to the left? So is that the boy with the red hoodie? It's not actually in this case he's naked from the like it's a sort okay, of yeah. head and shoulders and as you walk up the top of the stairs, uh, keep going and it's not that yeah, one. Not, yeah, I'll grab that. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's the one I find. I don't know, and it's because there's no identifying. Mm -hmm part of the community he's from and oh, yeah he just looked to me there's just I just felt a, a kind of an overwhelming feeling of of vulnerability and truthfulness and you can feel all his kind of I don't know how it's possible mm. but I can see what he's like and mm. and how he projects versus the kind of how young he really is and mm. yeah, it's just an incredibly beautiful image it was this is this is kind of one of the most special moments for me of the whole project because this is, is one of the last pictures I took on the project and when I started you know um, and the project which is actually it's over five years it's probably seven year ago, years ago when I made my first visit and the, my first visit I was unknown to anybody and I walked through an estate and a lot of kids just pelted stones at me but it's just what they do you know they, they weren't thinking about what they did and um, so but, you know I kind of got, a, got away from there pretty quick <laughs> it was no problem like you know and um, then through a series of opening other doors, doors open and spending so much time with, on the estate, you know, there's, there's a line that Bruce Davis, from Bruce Davidson, which I love, you know, I spend a lot of time as an outsider, then I cross a certain line and I become an insider. And that's kind of how it works. You have to spend so much time and, and you know, you're, you're trying to let people know you want to do this honest portrait of, of them, which isn't. It's in, it's, it's, in, it's in a location which has political weight, but it's not about politics. 
It's about humanity. It's about what we share in our hearts. And that took a long time for people to believe. It sounded such like an arty kind of idea, you know. You, but what? But then people began to trust me and open up. And then, you know, I've, I've stacking pallets on both both communities, and um, and we went on this on this journey. And um, and then this is in my last summer, which is this is 2018, and. Uh, Neil was, I'd actually photographed Neil five years ago. I have him, he's only 18 here. I have a picture of him and he looks of, uh, as 13, but he looks like a 10 year old child, you know? And uh, so we got a bit of a history. And uh, But on this day, Neil said, do you want to come on top of the bomb fire, which is about 30 meters high? And I'd never actually been on, on top of the fire. And um, I just thought, yeah, you know, this is, yeah, let's do it. And I started climbing up the sides first and realized I can't do this like they do. So they put me in a big um, cherry picker and I got on top. It was very rickety. I hate heights. And, um, you know, I was before the guys and we're overlooking Belfast and I'd come this journey, you know, uh, so, not that it matters, but a sudden Irish guy on a, on, on a union, this is a union fire. Not that those things are important, but, but internally that was really we come such a long way and we were sitting on top of this fire as friends. We connected in our hearts. We connected. It wasn't about other things. It's about things we're sharing. It's about thinking. It, the things we feel like looking forward. You know, our future is going to turn out. Our lives are going to turn out. The questions we can ask ourselves. And that, so I had, I had my moment with Neil and that was what I was trying to portray in this picture. You know, just looking forward and you know, hopefully, you know, the, the hope we have for your life, the vulnerabilities, the things we share. And, this really was an incredibly shared moment. I kind of felt when I, after I took this picture that this probably is the end of the project because I can't imagine having an experience in a pro in the rest of the project as positive as as this picture was. Um, Look at thanks, and I was going to ask Max about his first encounters with the images. Yeah. I mean, and how do they relate to your own? How what we're talking about relates to how? Yeah. You I mean, I. I was born in Belfast um, and grew up there, you know, in the 80s and 90s, but my parents are both Aussies. So I, I was an immigrant family, you know, in Belfast or on the outskirts. I lived next to the barracks, in the pal palace barracks, sort of out around the coast. Um, and I was sort of baffled as a, you know, a young child without having this sort of cultural history in my family as to what was going on, why, the, why all the paved stones were red, white and blue. And, why, why the kids were asking me what religion I was when I didn't know. And, you know, I mean, I found the whole thing intense when I didn't understand it. And then as I grew up there and sort of took on a bit of the culture and the sort of the energy and the, the humor, I, you know, I became, I came to love, to love the culture, but I also had this sort of relationship where I was a little bit like um, Ender saying how he was, you know, a quiet child and sort of withdrawn. And I find music has always been something that I'm, you know, I can express things which I can't put into words with music. But when I, when I looked at these images, it, it brought back a lot of things which, which I haven't really commented on artistically before. So it was like, it was a really, I found it a really powerful process. It was something, it wasn't hard for me to know what fit musically, what didn't fit. Every time I tried, you know, does this thing, what about this idea? What about this? When I put the music with the imagery, it just, it either worked or it, or I had a, rea a really gut reaction that it didn't work. It was so in a sense, it was, you know, because of my, you know, my background there, it, it really pushed me in a particular direction. I felt that I, I could only, there was only one correct way of doing it, which was, which interesting. It's not usually like that with projects. It was because of, because of that background that it sort of pushed me in that way, even though I was to some degree an outsider, I think maybe that helped as well because the idea that, you know, the imagery is not portraying, you know, one side or the other, or trying to make that point. It's about human, you know, it's about humanity and mm. the feelings involved and the energy of the place and what have you. So I think maybe it was, it was a good thing that I didn't have the historical bag, you know, baggage in my family or anything. It's, you know, tied to one side or the other. Mm. Um, but it was a really enjoyable process and just, I find the images really moving. Um, I just wish I could have seen the actual exhibition, you know, in Dublin. Um, but maybe I hope I get to see the images, you know, another time. I love what you did with the lighting, you know, the, the sort of dark rooms, you know, and the, and the, the sort of spots that sort of the imagery looks almost, I don't know, it almost, almost like backlit or something. I don't know. It just it, the colors become really vibrant from what I've seen. Uh, see the, do you want to see one of the pictures that kind of you, you were more of a reference for? Yeah, sure. Um, 
one of the main references that I had was the uh, boy in the red hoodie. And for me, it's just, it's a beautiful image. You know, I think Northern Ireland for me was always, you know, it's, it's such a beautiful place. You can see in the background, these, I don't know what sort of plants it is in the background. And then the white, you know, the white housing, you know, typical of, of the estates there. And you've got, you've always got that balance between beautiful nature and then, but with an edge of trouble, with an edge of, it's hard to put into words what it is, but you can see that there's, you know, there's a, there's a lot going on there. There's a lot going on for a young guy. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So I just find that, you know, it's, it's interesting, this idea of how we can express things through photography, through music, through film, mm. which we can't express through words. Mm. For, you know, I guess if we were poets, then maybe we could express it through words. Yeah. I'm really interested in this idea that, which you two have both mentioned as well, that you use your, your own mediums as a, mm. as a means of personal expression. It's mm. not just, mm. you're not just trying to document something, you're trying to put across some personal feeling and some mm. ideas that you can't express in other ways. And that was that was new to me, to be honest, because that's how I approach music. But I was really interested to hear that both of you approached your art like that as well. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it's very much um, the same for me. Um, and I, I think that's the beauty of, you know, how, how we evolved into, you know, I just I just want to say just how I, I just love what you what you created, Max, the music. It just so made the exhibition. It was, it was more than than I ever dreamt of the, the music you, you created for it. But you know, it, it was it was always that journey right of of making work that help that that expresses those things that music you can't put it in words but you, it helps you understand something. You don't I don't know why you understand it, but it touches you, it touches your stomach and it moves you. And that and you, your work is full of layers, it's full of humanity, it's full of changing emotions and it, Apart from some vocals, it's, it's you know it's it's, it's all musical and the mu it doesn't have to be words. It, it grabs you and it moves you, and it's it's whatever that is that that I I try to do in the photography. First of all, before anything else, the the picture has to have that, and that's what I go into first. Is to is you go into those deep emotions and the, the, you, know, you have to be touching, feeling that per connection with the person, um, and you just it's just a moment you bring them to a moment that you connect. It's a certain thing we share. And that's the moment you bring them to make your picture. Like Lenny does, his, a lot of his subjects are people who quite, can't quite find their way in life. They can't, can't quite fit in, but they're beautiful people, but they, they're, they're not being allowed to fit in. But, but, and they can't express how they feel, but Lenny, he, he tries to, Express how to feel within the within the movies within the movies he makes, and I think that's fair to say. Lenny, I mean, I th thank you. I, I think the thing that's interesting in in all of this, and 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 music is the thing that proves that the like that the the the, the sort of the poetic or whatever that kind of however it is that we open ourselves up through art is beyond the descriptive and beyond the. Um, narrative mm. and so even in a narrative medium if it's only narrative in other words if everything that you're shooting as a film director or filmmaker is just attempting to tell you information that moves the story along then it's a very debased sort of experience in comparison to uh, mm. something where you where the sense of seeing through into something deeper um, and, and that falling through, I get it in music and I get it in what Max did for this, that feeling that, that with, a, with a change, you know, sonically or, or harmonically or whatever, you feel like you've, you've fallen into a deeper understanding or you've, you've gone underneath. Mm. And I get that feeling from the pictures, your pictures as well, that you, you, you can't define it because there's the, the, the experience itself is the kind of encounter with the picture. You know, it's not, you can't just say, well, it's not reducible, I suppose. That's the point. It's not reducible, um, and I, I'm very interested in that um, th that that question of like your practice and uh, in terms of meeting the subjects that you photograph. Do you begin with very definite ideas of where you're going to bring people, or do you just dive into the relationship and and wait for that sense of kind of of of, of an open channel? Well, I think I, I would start projects kind of like maybe 
um, you would start a project or other directors would start a project that first of all I work out the idea what I would like to be and I, I get it down to every detail what I'd like the colour to be what I'd like the light to be and in the case of on my first visit to uh, the estates in Belfast you know they're really hard places it's tough places for young people and if it's raining and grey it's it's really not creating the picture I wanted to make and so from that first visit I thought it's going to take me a long time but I only I'm only going to shoot on bright light you know I wanted to create to use the light to touch a feeling to create some optimism within the photography and then there's I work at the type of in this case it was about youth culture particularly the potential of youth culture and that 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 there was a certain type of person I was looking for a vulnerable sort of person and so it was a case of waiting around for days or being there for days, not waiting and getting to know people for days, but it was, it was a certain person I was looking for. And I, I guess, like you said, I don't, I don't, I, lo I love documentary photography, but I don't do like documentary photography where you see someone and grab them. It's, I'm, I'm trying to bring people that are in a real world into a kind of a setup world where I can focus the emotions I'm trying to portray in the project. And so you you see the person, you approach them, you spent days and you ask them and you really hope that they'll engage with you because it's intimidating. And, you know, but a lot of people, you know, they, they want to be seen, they want to be acknowledged and that you, you realise that people, they have a humanity, they have a story and, and they want... It's they a want, drive for human expression, you know? Yeah, yes. And, and Everyone to, has it, right? To be seen, yeah. And so someone would, would say yes and then you... So the, that's when we like we like Susie when she's working on scene with you, um, um, Lenny, you'd um, or Max when you put, get making a piece of music to to make a short clip. You you have to completely understand the emotion before you pick the camera up. It's a very short amount of time I have before I before I say the person could leave. So I've, I've thought about the picture before I've asked them. I know I know what I want to make, and then you you bring you go to them and then you hope they'll say yes and then in that moment you bring them to the spot that you'd already wrapped out in your head and you get them into the place and i suppose that thing of understanding emotion or specializing it you bring them in there pretty quickly because 10 frames is the most yeah two minutes is the most you have so but that's enough if you're if you got to strip down if you if you if you know and you've waited and you've waited for days not to shoot in rain <laughs> but to wait for that odd sunny uh, day in, in, in Belfast and so that, that was the process of making them. Max I was going to ask you the question which is the thing that I find most fascinating about com composition because in in the case of Ender's work and my work there is a you there is a world which is knocking you know pushing back towards you so you you can you wait for these moments which come in a sort of reactive uh, experience, uh, at least for me, even though even though I'm involved in the setting it up completely, like these people don't exist. Mm -hmm. I then once they're there in front of me, I try to encounter them like they do, and that mm -hmm. I don't know what they're going to do, and that I I don't I try to stop it feeling engineered, even though there is engineering involved. Yeah. But in your work, you it is entirely like what 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 are you going into the studio with? There's an element of the same thing where. I have, it's the same thing, but coming from internally. And for example, if I feel a certain way, I can't make a piece of music expressing a different feeling. So this, this process was easy because I can look at these photographs and all the feelings come flooding in. And that's what all I need to, to, to work. Um, if I don't have that, then, you know, I spend a lot of time. I do a lot of collaborations with, you know, visual artists and, and philosophers and scientists and, all these things that I find inspiring and interesting because for that exact reason to, to elicit some sort of, you know, emotional response and something that I can work with. Um, because if that's not there, then the music just flails around, you know, we need that. And, and sometimes it's not there. And sometimes, it, you know, it's there at five in the morning, you just got to go to the studio and just, you know, try and get the idea done while it's there. So there's, there's definitely something a little bit like, you know, the idea of photography, like it's like you're capturing, your internal state and you're taking a snapshot of that and once you've got the idea done then you can go back to sleep you know a few hours later and then and then sort of pull it together over the next weeks but you've got to yeah you're taking a snapshot of your soul sort of thing you know and then yeah, yeah. and then trying to you know augment that that I, I mean that just what you said and i was like, I think that kind of just resonates with it all because that's really i think what we're all doing you're 
you're exploring your own internal dialogue as well and you're looking for a way to explore that in the world and in, in my in the case of my world it's it's going out into the world and finding people to make it and express those feelings and you know and Lenny says your feelings within the, the narrative and the actors but that's that's essentially you know you're making music at five in the morning I think is what we're doing in in our media it's, it's the same thing only working with what we've been you know lucky to have yeah yeah. yeah, it's been interesting every time I've asked a question as well. Mm. You know, we've chatted before. It's always been it's been interesting how many parallels there are between the different processes, even though we're working in such different mediums and mm. in so, with such different technology. And you know, there's so many differences yet underlying that. It's all you know, all of the same things. Also, but, there's mm. a sort of funny thing which, like, there's a biological component to doing it in the sense that you sort of, I feel it's like a sort of. A kind of form of internal hygiene like if I don't if I'm not working on something or if I don't feel I'm mm. if or even if I am working on something but it feels mechanical mm. um, or or sort of just analytical you know mm. like and I can do a good job but I get no pleasure from that and I also don't feel that sort of sense of, mm. of you know hosed myself down internally you know Absolutely. You know that that, that there's a, a a sort of a requirement constitutionally to get stuff out, mm. and 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 go through that process of thinking something, feeling it, trying to make something which represents mm. it, and then mm. letting it go. Yeah, yeah it's really, I'm really interested in this whole thing. You know, why is it that we're so driven to try and? It's almost like I don't know if it's fear of death or what. You know, that some yeah, trying to take something of ourselves and render it or just pull it out. You know, and why why is it is it fear of death? Is that what, are we all you know? Well, it's, I think part of it is that we're we're we were lucky. We we're we were privileged privileged to be able to do what we chose to do. Like like there was one child on on the on the estates I was working on, and he was about ten, and um, we we're on the estate. And you know what 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 helped open up the line for me a bit. For um, I'm, I'm not a footballer. I was so bad at it, but I've I've worked with a lot of players, shot a lot of players, and at a certain point, I was doing a lot of stuff for Adidas, and I shot Messi, and so. Um, that was a great way to to start a chat, you know. And I thought, oh, you're not you're not such a moron. <laughs> you're so messy. And uh, and then this kid, he just went, how how did you how did you get to do what you do? And I said, well, I'm just from a really normal background, and I, I I just wanted to. I knew what I didn't want to do more so, and I kind of liked doing this. And I just said, you know, you could do something like this. You know, it's you know it's. There's going to be films in Belfast, and you could do. It. And his eyes just started, like getting bigger and bigger. And I said, "Yeah, you know, it's you know, I was just, I was lucky. My parents supported me, and and uh, I was able to do it. But honestly, it's just anybody can. You you don't have to do what you think you have to do. And so, in developing your your question is like we were lucky to realize that we had something we loved doing, and maybe maybe a bit of a ta a bit of a talent that we were still trying to get good. <laughs> But we had something, a calling that moved us and we were lucky to recognize it. And I guess we keep trying to explore it. And like Lenny said, I feel really sad when I'm not doing something or pushing it further. And you finish your project and the day after you just think, I need to do something more. And then you need to keep that alive. And it's something in you. And we're just, and you, you, you want to do it while you can, while there's exactly, while you've got breath in your body, you want to be doing it all the time. And it's, it's so beautiful to, feel so passionate about what you do when you're a baldy, <laughs> you know, this is a few years, just a few years later, you know what I mean? We're, 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 I'm probably more passionate now than I was when I was 20. Maybe it's because I just understand it more now and you want to do more and more. And yeah, your longevity is, you know, <laughs> yeah, you, that might be part of it too. Now. Yeah. I mean, that thing about, uh, I think also there's the, the negative side of it for me is that it's, it's also driven by a large sort of un, like if I was to think what's the sort of background music for for my mm. adult life it's definitely a feeling of dissatisfaction mm. like I you know because it because it and it never and I don't feel that the, the 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 relief that you get when you do something is not long lived you no. know so it's an it's definitely I think that the desire to make things is definitely um it may just be a kind of, I don't know, it, it's impossible to get to the root of it because it seems, I, I can't imagine it not being there, but 
but I think it may be at the root of it, it is a sort of fear of invisibility or a, mm-hmm. or a sort of desire to encounter, like to, to I, yeah, why should it be important to express yourself? I, I really, that's a question that I have no way of really uh, analyzing. It's amazing about how, about how important it is. I mean, it's, I feel so sad when I can't do stuff. Or also, you know, when you're stuck in something, you can't move it forward or you, you feel you haven't got a project left in you and stuff like this. It's, it's a really scary thing to feel, you know. And so when you're in a project, it's just one of the most beautiful feelings to feel, you know. And that includes working with yourself and normal people. And sure, Max, you know, in the middle of your music, you're just in this place that's so incredible. And then it's so incredible when you're, for me, to be with people you know, and you're sharing the same sensibilities and you're, 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 you're I, I guess that's part of it. You're, that's part of what I love. I love that the, this journey, I'll, you know, we're just telling out the best bits. It's seriously hard a lot of the time. And um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And like, like often when I'm pretty much every time, um, I've been to Belfast so often on this project and I just put, I spend all, one to the last three years I've actually started taking all this, but before then every penny, goes into projects and uh, and I stay in a really brilliant backpackers in Belfast um, and um, it's great to meet people there and it's called Global Village if Mark happens to be listening um, but you know the first few days and walking up to Shanklin the falls of this road and coming back at night time and generally nothing has happened it feels like nothing will happen I'm thinking to myself what the hell are you doing Enda? other people are going away on holidays doing this what are you doing you know you, and literally you have that three days in you think I ain't going to get a picture. This is not going nowhere. What's good? And then, but you stick with it. And then two weeks later, you think, that's why I do it. You know, you, you, people open up. You met people just because of this project or a film or a piece of me. You met people you never, ever would have met in your life. And so you have these amazing exchanges. So maybe it's about living. Maybe that's why we do it. It's about living. It's experiencing life and trying to bring that into the mediums that we work with so other people can feel something from what we make. Maybe, maybe that's it, because you know, you're, I am trying to move people into prints. I really think about when printing it, it's not just making it about making a beautiful, a beautiful print. I'm trying to make a, pr- a print that will connect with people as well. It's not just connecting with the subject, it's using the print to connect with the person, the viewer, so they slow down when they look at the picture, so they, they feel the connection with the subject. But it doesn't have to, they don't need to know the person's name. They're, they feel that emotion too. It's gone from here to the subject to sorry here to the subject to the viewer and then that's what was so beautiful work with max it was that feeling was brought into another dimension um, so the viewer when they walked around the space was having the beautiful layers of atmosphere from max's music which f- f- yeah brought well, the space i mean it is it is like I know we're going to get into questions soon, but there is something, just as you were talking, I was thinking about it. There is something about maybe the root of it for me, and I don't know if it resonates for both of you, is there is this feeling when you, there's a sort of state you get into, which is which is exhilarating. And it's kind of, and the, the desire to actually, like in a really fundamental way, to it's like if you see something incredible mm-hmm. and there's nobody beside you to tell or show or witness, there's a sense that you haven't completely experienced it. And maybe that's what it is. There's this kind of state sense of being in some kind of slightly altered state where you're very present with what's there, yeah. whether it's an internal experience or, 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 or it's generated by some encounter. Mm. And that the idea of that not being recognized, it is, and so there's an ego to it as well, because there's a sort of, this is worth Mm-hmm. communicating but there is that feeling of like a fundamental desire to share mm. this very like this sense of revelation or something so maybe that's maybe that's the kind of root of it and it is that in that sense there is a generosity to it as well mm-hmm. uh, i don't know if that makes sense max to you yeah absolutely you know, the, the thing that rang bells for me as well was this the sort of punishment of the, of the process as well you know that there's this pure enjoyment phase for me when I'm writing music and in just in that first creative phase and expressing trying to get some sort of feed something through and then with time it becomes more and more torturous you know as you start analyzing the values you know you sort of start applying value systems to it and is this good is this crap you know it's sort of it all starts going around in your head one day you think something's good the next day you change your mind about it. it's maddening you know you just get lost in this I do anyway I think that's part of the punishment of the whole process and but 
on the whole, you do it for those moments when you, you feel that you're, you have a really positive experience and, 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 you know, you can just express that. And there's just some sort of really fundamental joy in doing that. Uh, and even if it means months of, you know, annoyance afterwards, it's, you know, it's still worthwhile. Um, yeah. I mean, I'd recommend anyone to definitely, I mean, just writing music, you know, it, it's not, you don't, you can do it. You can do it on your iPad or on your phone, whatever you can. It's so accessible these days. I'd recommend anyone to try writing music and just expressing ideas musically. It's just really engaging. Um, I don't have any musical training, you know, so I, I just got into it purely from that on that level, just being absorbed by it and sort of just, just following that through. Um, I'd recommend it to anyone. Absolutely. Nandy, can I ask you a question before we go into uh, questions? Well, you know, Max specialist in music and me specialist in photography and cinema is, the t is audio and, and visual together. What, what, do you, what do you like about working with music and um, the narrative and putting the two together? What is it that? Well, I mean, it's such a film is a sort of, you know, in one sense, it's, it's this kind of odd hybrid of lots of things, you know, drama, it's got a bit of theater and it's got photography and it's got music and sound design and all these things, but it also has the kind of both the advantage and maybe the kind of sometimes disadvantage of feeling a bit like life mm. in that you do sort of get you, the, the sort of naive sense of it is you, you know, you turn the, you open the lens cap and you look through a film camera or, or a digital camera and you're getting it, it's just the way life looks you know with that particular lens and that perspective and so sometimes um the problem with film is not like adding it's subtracting you know i always think um like if you write if you're a writer you know it's a blank page and you can choose every single thing that the audit that the reader experiences is chosen by you and if it's not there, if it's not said by you, it's not there. Mm. Was when you, the cameras are stupid, you know, in a really interesting <laughs> way, you know, you just look at something and it all floods in. And, and it's, mm. I think that that can be the terrifying thing when you start trying to make films, you think it's going to have this atmosphere mm. because it has an atmosphere in your head and then you film it and put it together. And it just looks like a bunch of people moving around in a space and it has no tension and no life and no truth. And big part of the process is understanding how to kind of, see it as a medium you know what i mean yeah. rather than seeing it as a window yeah um, and, sure. you know so for me i don't know it's this kind of i've had some of the most powerful experiences of my life watching films yeah. yes and that's where it started for me just this idea as a as a space in which you could express these ineffable things or deeply move people yeah. uh, you know and and i've never lost my fascination and feel like i'm just at the beginning of the of, of sort of a, a, of understanding how it works Agreed. at the same time recognizing that you know the years go by and I don't have infinite time so that's not a journey I'll get to the end of as we're as we're talking visual and, and music we're probably getting towards questions shall we are you comfortable looking at one of your clips sure if you want to absolutely yeah because yeah. okay. yeah. it's it touches on everything we're talking about and it'd be I'm sure Max and I would love to see some of your work on this if i can find it and is sure. that a it's just a bit in garage that yeah. where um there's been a, a, a sort of very important relationship in the main character's life josie he works in a rural garage and um it's it, he's done something which has kind of damaged it and this is where he recognizes i suppose that <laughs> he's not going to have the relationship anymore and it's the only cue only music cue in the film now, can you see? No, it's funny. It when when I try and share a screen, it won't do it. I, it's copyright, I'd say. You know that. Mm. I, I can't tell them that I actually own it. Yeah. Um, it's copyright. It won't play on your display. Yeah, never mind, guys. That's okay, cool. yeah. sorry. Well, well I mean, something you were saying, Lenny, was again every every time we have these discussions about the different mediums, it, I'm suddenly like it's exactly the same for me. The idea I always see making music as sculpting. As I, you know, I, I put a load of thing ideas down, and then I'm always taking bits away, taking bits away, taking bits away to sculpt it down to the core. What is it that's the core of what I'm trying to express here, and trying to get rid of all the chaff, basically. Yeah, and that's which is really interesting that you said. It's exactly that's always removing for me anyway. It's always removing. Mm -hmm. Um, we should do questions. Yeah. So, 
I'm wondering, um, Trish, how do you want to do it? Do you, do you want to choose questions or? Yeah, um, thank you very much, everyone. That was really interesting. I love what you're saying about um, editing and sculpting, Max, because that's often the, the chat we have, because in our experience, gallery Trout, the one thing that sets out great artists is the fact that they can edit their own work, that they can sculpt, they can cut away, even what might be great individual pieces, but that they don't add to the overall. So it's really interesting to you talk about that. I have, um, I'll run through a couple of questions. I've one here from Dave Campbell, and this is a photography question um, for Enda. Is it essential that a photograph is good enough to stand alone if it is viewed outside the context, context of its collective? Um, well, I think the way the photos fit to create an impression is, is, is as important as the photo standing alone themselves. So, and I think personally when I'm making um, a series, um, every, every picture I see them is like a little short film. And you know, the, 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 the portrait is, is, is about every detail in the, core, in, in the frame, not, not just what's in the eyes, it's, it's every, every bit of the frame. And, um, and then the, the series of pictures work together to, you know, to, to harness the idea. But it, for each picture, um, it has to be a standalone image. It has to have to, to, it has to, it only works when it, when it touches the emotions that I set out to make. So if it does, then it's a standalone image. And standalone images are fantastic. Some of the, there's so many amazing single images of the world. But I, I like them to bring that successful stand, standalone image, like if Lenny or Max will make a series of music, Lenny a series of um, images to tell a story. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the way a photographer can do it. Um, like a director of music, the only thing we can do is make an exhibition or a book. And it's my way of making a, a film, you know, lots of strong standalone images focus together to tell a story, um, a story that you decided to tell when you started the project. Is that yeah. kind of right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, question for you, Max, from a uh, big fan, Eamon Joseph McArdle. With the whole pandemic, do you feel yearning for the infinite, inf infinite has taken on a new meaning? Um, I mean, the idea behind that one is this sort of endless human drive, you know, the, the fact that we seek out, like, as we've been talking about, we're, we're all seeking out things we can do we're seeking out meaning by doing things photography music making film whatever it is which you can never reach an end point you know you're always we're always yearning for more we're, you know we set up these things maybe it's, you know you want your team your sports team to keep winning and if they win the local championship you want to win the euros and if win the euros you want to win the worlds or whatever and if you win the worlds you want to win the worlds the next year or you win you want to be the you know win the world championship more than any other team has done you know it never ends and we all seek out these, you know, these sorts of, you know, whether it's, it can be religion or whatever, we, we seek out these things. And that's what that project was about. It was about visualizing that um, as to whether that's, and, and, and making music, as to whether that's um, more relevant now. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the angle is. I'd be interested to know why they, you know, what the, what the angle is in terms of. There's a second part of this question. So should okay. be, would you change anything about how you view the human need to explore, especially since lockdown, and in fact, how we as humans yearn for the, for the infinite? Would I change anything about the need to explore? No, absolutely not. Okay. No, it's, it's right. into intuition and just following what we need to do, you know, being writing music for me has always been this process of just trying to figure out what was already what wanted to what I wanted to do before my brain got in the way and decided, you know, things. It's almost like get trying to chop all that away and just get down to the sort of core of what drives me and and, and try and find that and try and be free. And the more free I've been I've been able to to be the the you know the, the better the work I feel like it's been. But that's still a ongoing process there's so many pollutants you know there's all this you know social media barrage the news the all the crap going on in the world you know all you know it just we live in a messy world and it's really hard to for, for that not to get in the way um and that's also really relevant to this you know ender's work and what we're looking these you know this exhibition that we're looking at it's like these people that are you know have such humanity but in in the midst of this sort of messy environment in many ways you know um so yeah i hope that's answered in uh, 
Thank you. And following on from that, we've a, a, in a similar vein, we've a question from Doreen Kennedy. For all of you, on the act of creativity, the making of things, do you think the best work happens when something isn't worked out very specifically, but perhaps working from intuition somehow? Uh, that, that's a really good question. I think there is this beautiful, if you're lucky, you get these, it's a balance between control and chaos. Like it, it, there, there always has to be that, at least for me. And so if I have a very, very clear conception, I often go into a day with a very clear conception of what, I, what I'm after, but it's never a good day if that's what I kind of come out with, because it usually means I haven't been open to the unpredictable things and they can be problems. Problems are often useful because they just stop you from glibly pursuing your, you know, mental storyboard of something. And, and so that kind of, um, that interruption of that process, like, and the, and the things that actors in my case, it's like, just it, things do not seem the way I had anticipated on the day. And actually you have a choice then, which is that you either desperately try and control it or you try to go with it and, and, and temper your vision with what's there in front of you working with the real materials. And so I would, I would say it, it, the best work comes from a combination of sort of that kind of um, organ, self-organizing of your own impulses and intellect, and then the encounter with the unknown and the, and the problem and the, the mess, that, that's mm -hmm. where the good stuff happens. I, I'll just add something really, really quickly to that. I find exactly the same thing. You know, in my realm, I can be in total control if I want. I can have everything regimented, controlled, precise. And I found that it, it never led, you know, the work improved massively when I started finding ways of introducing randomness and disorder into the process. I build these machines that have a life of their own and do things I don't want them to do or I don't know what they're going to do. And that has become really core to my, you know, writing process. So another, another parallel there. Because I think in photography, there's a problem with beauty. And yeah. if things are too perfect, they lose that tension that, that is at the heart of really great work. I have another question here from Siobhan Lee de Kemp, and apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name, for all of you I think. Do you look back on your journeys and see growth or do you look back and think pity I didn't include X or Y? Shall I? Well, for me um, it's been total growth you know it's um, and yeah you'd, I would love to spend more more time if I could but we all have to make a living we can't be there forever. It's such a great journey to be on and and you do the best you very possibly can. So you, you can't regret that. You've seen, you've really tried and everything you possibly can. And that, actually that's something I, I took on when I was younger is um, to try and let the pressures of, of people's expectations flitter away. In my twenties, I you know, really looked toward to people, you know, what they thought of what I did. And then of course it really muddled me up because you, you're, people never liked what I did. They only liked what they liked and I thought they were right. And then I kind of got to a place where I, to reading actually, you know, Eckhart Tolle and people like this, and to try and, when I started that Mirror River project, I'd, um, I'd been to a number of different types of work and stuff like that, and it wasn't easy. And, you know, I just thought, I just want to do what I feel. I don't want to do what people think anymore. And it might be really rubbish. And for the first half of shooting at Mirror River, which took a couple of years, I thought this is probably the most boring thing I've ever done. But what, what I decided to think was, make every picture as as good as you possibly can and then when you get and then not the end wasn't the goal it's different from a um well maybe it's not different from a film piece of music but i, I had a book as the end goal and an exhibition but i thought make every picture as good as you can so even if it doesn't work out i know i've done my best and i couldn't have done any better and if people don't like it that's okay because i know i couldn't have done any better and if people like it that's really great too because you've done you've done your best and i think if you kind of work like that to make everything as good as you can you can't really have regrets then and it doesn't it's you really answered what you feel that's a big and a long answer sorry to your question have we got have we got it's, well, no it's a difficult question to answer so can, have we time for two more questions i've got one here from oshin o'driscoll enda and lenny when talking about portraying the creative emotions and, uh, and max too through the point of view of your subjects do you see that as exploitative if you're if you feel you're speaking on behalf of somebody else or representing somebody do you see it as, as exploitative? It, it can be or it can be wonderful it it like i think if you if what you're doing is in good faith mm. 
and and you you are treating the other person not just as material but as a, a, a you know as a, as another human being i think then it's a it's a a wonderfully positive thing mm. I don't think it's exploitative i think everything we do says something about ourselves so you know th th there are no clear distinctions there anyway even in life um it's mm. like you know it, if you fall in love with somebody that's uh, that's amazing for you as well but it, it's not an exploitative relationship it's a it's a mutual thing yeah. and a specific question for end on this about about as far as some, because what's very interesting about this body work is this different approach you brought to a, 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 a community that has been represented quite a bit and quite negatively. Mm -hmm. So we have a question from Mark O'Donnell. Know that these beautiful teams have their barriers up and can be hard to penetrate their defence barriers. How did you gain their trust and what did they make of, of, of the resulting images? Well, I think it was it was just it was being there for a long time to be to become a book. My, my, what I wanted to project, which is a project really fo on folks on new culture, either side of the peaceful, but not about where they're from, about, you know, their, their, their journeys, their, their place in life, their, their searches, their openness, um, their non-judgment. It was important for me, I went in as non-judgment, you know, no judgment. And people, the project was about not judging people, about showing a, a positive image of you culture not necessarily even irish youth culture just a person just people and i guess that's what i was trying to bring to the table to understand that this really is what i mean i want you to understand that I'll, you trust me i trust you and i want to show positive aspects and show you in a, in a positive way to show you know to show your vulnerabilities your potentials so people will look at you and realize you're a person and you should have this as, as many chances as everybody else in, in the world has. And I, I guess then people kind of realize it. And then after a couple of trips, I gave everyone prints, small prints, just to get to see what I was doing. And they liked them. They, 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 they got it. They saw, oh yeah, he's, he is kind of doing this. And then doors, further doors opened. It was, it was always, you know, work. You really have to be there and, and, and be around. People realize that they can trust you. And, uh, and, and you were trusting them too, you know, because I was out all night in all sorts of places. <laughs> so, um, so I guess trust, and that's the same with a director, I think, in a movie and, and, and Max with his collaborators. Is that, you know, say, for instance, working with Lenny on, on Normal People, you know, it was, it was such a privilege. But Lenny was such, I, I call him a captain. He was such a brilliant captain. He's so honest and true. And I think the part of the reason that normal people is so successful, besides the brilliant actors Daisy and Paul and everything else, is because the feeling that he created filtered down to everybody on the team and everybody genuinely cared. And that and I think that actually came through in the screen, the, the what people felt. So it was the trust and the care came it, it spread out. And I, I think it it comes through in the in the pictures. So awesome. uh, it's, it's amazing what people can pick up on um in these things you know we can't even put into words but yet anyone can watch they can look at an image or watch a film or you know listen to a piece of music and pick up these something and it's amazing it always yeah it always baffles me how people have such precision but i guess that's we're social animals and we're you know we have this extreme precision in reading faces and situations mm -hmm. and all sorts all these things we're not aware of but we apply that whenever we you know we take these things in mm -hmm. so, sort of yeah test them out to the power of you know our brains of what's going on behind the behind the scenes you know i have a tough question here for lenny from jennifer quinn so following on from the point end was making about combining um his photographs with, with max's sound um for the soundtrack of normal, normal people are saying it was amazing do you have a particular piece of work you feel really came to life or took on a new deeper meaning with the addition of a song no pressure oh that's so interesting because normal people is the first time i ever use songs everything right. else composed music uh, or licensed sometimes um instrumental music there's a bit of yeah there's a there's a uh, just a track i absolutely love and it's just a, at the end of episode two of normal people um it's a track i've always loved and wanted to use but it's elliot smith angelus which comes in a, just before the credits start on episode two and it somehow captures a kind of anxiety um in the relationship that's 
uh, we've just arrived at very subtly, I think, in that episode. So that's probably a good example of, of, of a good piece of music. And there's a piece of music in, in Room when the boy is trying to get out of the rug in the back of the, uh, in the, back of the truck, which is a, a licensed piece. And it just absolutely did something very necessary at that moment that we, we would not otherwise have been able to do. It. And I think we've just time for one more question. Um, we can't take all the questions. So thank you to everybody yeah. who sent in questions. I think for everybody, um, the question is, do you always work from personal inspiration sources or do you focus on external sources? and experiences for inspiration that's to you all uh, i'll start because i i'll throw my bit in um both i think is the answer so mm. for, sometimes i read something and i just find uh, something about a person that's described in a newspaper or mm. uh, just just very powerful and and it starts a process but then it has to resonate internally for it to be my mm. story to tell so it's a bit of both mm. Yeah, I, I think it's the same for me. You, you, you just a subject you're drawn to. For in this case, um, doing Love's Fire song, which was kind of in my mind for twenty years, and um, or just any project you do, it's it's it's, it's an outside thing. Something has hit something off, or a story you've read a short story or something, and then you you bring your internal world to that external world. So yeah, it is. yeah, I, I find um really important just to feed things in without any. You know, without planning for it to be in a project or even caring, you know, anything other than I'm interested in this. This looks beautiful. I don't know. This looks scary. Whatever. Just yeah. some, some sort of some sort of th reason why I want to explore a book or a film or going somewhere. Whatever it is, just feeding things in. I spend a lot of time reading and listening to audio books and just trying to, you know, put stuff in my brain which is more yeah. productive than all the crap that usually gets put in, you know, by social media when we're not wanting it to. So you know that. <laughs> Yeah. Just kind of feed something more productive in there, and then just mm. let let the process happen naturally, and then you know the ideas start coming. and And the other thing I find really important is daydreaming times, so some sort of time just to let your brain just be free, and you know to see what ideas come. I always, when I used to travel for gigs before everything stopped, I found that time really useful when I, you know, no one could call me, and I was sort of traveling, and I would just that's when a lot of ideas would come. So I, I you know, I'm still trying to find how to do that now in the new yeah. lifestyle. Um, so I think we have to finish folks our time is against us so first of all thank you Enda, Bo, Max Cooper for making what is a beautiful exhibition and, mm. and working together to make something that enriches us all and um, thank you very much Lenny for uh, leading the talk tonight and thank you all for participating in it tonight is also a celebration of uh, the, the launch of Endabo's fifth artist's book. So Enda has an actual in real life copy that he's going to hold up. So uh, it's available on, through the Gallery of Photography's website at the price of 22 euros. Uh, so you can visit our website and you can get your own. It's a limited um, edition publication and it's incredibly beautiful. And that's so, one of the great guys called Rocket who was a great support to me when I was in Belfast. So that's for you, Rocket. <laughs> Trisha, so, before you go, can I just show you one other thing? No, no. <laughs> second, just a second. Um, sure. It's um, just talking about you know putting stories in in a still and music and there's a photographer that's a huge inspiration to me and it's connected to everything. But I just want to show it because I love her work and unfortunately she died quite young, Tish Murta. And um, I showed it to Lenny. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, yeah, beautiful. My it just has, it's like watching, it's like, a, it's, a, it's a movie, you know, it's a film. It's not just a photo. It's every, there's so much happening in here. There's so much story. She's just the most exquisite photographer. Um, you know, you just wonder, there's a beginning outside the frame, there's an end there, but we, we don't know what it is. So she's come in, where's she gone to? Where's her life going to? And these are the things that really move me and, and shape me. And these are the things that I think about. And I just wish I, I could have met this photographer, Tisha Murchard, because I was only found in the last two years ago, uh, an exhibition, the Photographer's Gallery in London. And uh, it's really lovely. Her daughter, Ella, is bringing her, her work to the, um, you know, to the world and it's getting the recognition it deserves. So um, just inspiration um, for us all. Just wanted to show you that. It's a lovely way to end, Enda. That's very generous of you. Okay, thank you very much and good night, everybody, and see you soon. Thank you. Peace.